Alrighty, hello there mathematicians. Today's objective is students will be able to write equations from consecutive should be you from consecutive integer problems. And we're obviously going to solve these equations as well. Okay, get that down. Alright, consecutive. Think about what consecutive means. Again, if you're just waiting for me to give you the answer and not thinking, you're not going to retain this. You're not going to learn it. Okay. Consecutive basically means that it's in order that one number is right after another number. That's in order. One number is right after another number. So, I mean, examples of this are like 11, 12, and 13, right? They're in order, right after one another. Okay. Odd numbers. You, you should know what these are, but if you had to be specific and describe it to a friend, what would you say? Okay. It gets a little trickier to like say, oh, odd numbers are blank. Okay. Odd numbers are this. There are any number that ends and we should say also the last digit. So if the last digit is, so it ends in a uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay. So if you have the number like 38,263, okay, what does it end in? Well, it ends in a 3, so that's how you know that it's an odd number. Okay, An even number. I'm not going to write this. You guys can just listen and write this in. Okay, An even number is any number that ends in A. Again, any number that ends in A. And think about, what do even numbers end in? I'm guessing a lot of you said 2468. You might have been missing one. What about 10? Is 10 even? Yes, it is, and 10 ends in a 0. So, an even number is any number that ends in a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Again, you must have that in your notes. If you didn't catch that or you're not done, hit rewind and get it. All right, an integer. You should know this. Again, I'm not going to write this in for you, but the expectation is that you do write it in. An integer you should know is a positive or negative whole number. An integer is a positive or negative whole number. And think about what that means. It means that we're not talking about decimals and we're not talking about fractions. So if it were me, I would add a bullet right there for integer and put no decimals, no fractions. All right. Synonyms for equal. Um, what are some words that mean equal? So if you saw them, you'd say, oh, I know that means equal. Okay, think of some. Um, I thought of some, and if you guys have more, again, that's what I wanted you to think of at first. If you guys can think of more, definitely let me know in class uh, when we meet next. So some other words for equal are equivalent. This is a big one. Equivalent. It's a U. Okay, equivalent means equals. If you see the word is, it says something is, that means equal. Or it might say like is the same as. Okay. Could also see something like the total. The total. Okay. And total can sometimes mean 
to add things up, but it can also mean equals. Like if you spent a total of, um, let's just write total of, you know, if you spend a total of 13 bucks at the movies, it's like, oh, that equals 13 what you spent. Okay? All right, again, if you have more, make sure you bring those up uh, in class. So circle those and make a note that, hey, you want to share those out when you get to class. All right, let's go on to translating and then solving. All right, these are word problems. I shouldn't have to tell you what should be going through your head. It should be automatic by this point in the year. Okay, we need to use cups and annotate as we read these. So, four more than, well, more, four, I like to just write everything out in numbers, more than, okay, now, there's that word then, Remember, with the word then, we put a loop -de on it because that tells us, oh, we're going to have to switch the order of things when we see the word then. Ten times a number. Okay. Is, is means equals 120. Okay. So as I'm reading that, I just kind of write above it, and that will help me feel this in now. So, ten times a number, four more than. So I would have written it this way, four plus... 10, oops, that should be a 10, in equals 120. But because it has the word then, I need to switch those. So it should be 10 in plus 4 is equal to 120. So this says 4 more than, right? The 4 more than 10 times a number is 120. Now you may be saying, but Mr. Irwin, with addition, the order doesn't matter, right? But you need to get in the habit of whenever you see that word then, you just automatically switch them. Because with subtraction, it does matter. And so many students forget to switch the order when they see that word then, and then they get the problem wrong. Okay? All right, and then you can go ahead and solve this. So do your do in your new box and solve that quick. Okay, if you're not finished solving it, make sure you hit pause. Okay, the answer to that when you solve it, I got n equals, let's see, 11.6. And you can plug it into the original um, equation and make sure that that balances out. Okay, I plug that in, it does check out. Let's go on to the next one, example two. Go ahead and annotate this quickly by again reading it carefully and then writing it above it. So hit pause, annotate. Okay, I'm going to do this quick because you should have already done it. 20 less than. Less means subtraction. There's that word then. We're going to have to switch it. The quotient, we got to know quotient means division, of a number and 6. A number and 6 is equal negative 24. Okay, now I'm going to kind of put this all together. I know I'm going to have to switch the order. It's not going to be 20 minus it's going to be something minus 20 because, again, the word then tells us to switch it. The quotient of a number in 6. I could show it as n divided by 6, but I prefer to show mine as a fraction when I'm doing equations. n over 6. Fraction bar means division, obviously. Okay, and then is negative 24. Okay, go ahead and hit pause now and solve it. Okay, first thing. You should have added 20 to both sides. Add 20. N over 6 is equal to, again, your work should be much neater than mine. It's hard to write on this iPad real neatly. Uh, negative 4. And now, this is really important. Your work should look exactly like mine. Okay, If you're not finished, again, hit pause and try it. But your work should look exactly like this. N over 6, we multiply this by 6 over 1. And when we multiply these two fractions, 6 over 1 times n over 6, the 6 in the numerator and the 6 in the denominator cancel out, leaving me with just n equals. Got to also multiply this side by 6. Again, I don't need to show this right side by 6 over 1 because negative 4 is not a fraction. Why make 6 a fraction? The answer to this is n equals negative 24. Okay? All right, do the next one. Fourteen less than loopy. That word less than the then 
So 20. Okay. All right. So we got to switch these. No, 20 is bad. So switch the order. It's not 14 minus 20. It's 20 minus 14. Now, do we have an equal to sign with this? The answer is no. There's nothing that says is or is equivalent to or totals. Okay. So this is just an expression where that's it. Okay. All right, let's go on to the next page. Okay, on this page, I um, want you guys try number two here on your own. Again, try number two all on your own. Um, number three, we're going to do in class. Okay, so right now you're going to hit pause and do number two. When you're all finished and have your circle answer circled, you can unpause it. Hit pause now. Okay, we're going to go on again. We'll check the number two when we get to class. Okay, modeling problems with consecutive. All right, read uh, number four real quick. Okay, you should have been two, oops, let me get to my pen here. Two consecutive even integers whose sum, so sum tells us we have to add is, means equals, 78. There's a lot going on in this. Okay. Now, typically with these types of problems, most of you in the past have used guess and check. Okay, where you just try some two integers, even, see if they add up 78. If not, you you know change your numbers more or less, um, and then you try to get it. We're in algebra now. Okay, we need to know how to do this using math. Alright? So even if you think you know how to do it, I want you to get these steps down, because these steps once we practice them a little bit, we'll make it pretty easy. Okay, so step no number one is to simply write. And we're gonna have five steps in here, so make sure you write somewhat small. Okay, write an example of numbers. Okay, and let's actually do these steps kind of as we go here. So find two consecutive even integers. Well, consecutive means one right after another. Okay, so I'm thinking like one, two, or three, four. But they have to be even integers. So one's not even, so I'd have to start with two. And I can't say two, three. Again, I'm thinking consecutive, because three is not even. So the two consecutive even integers, the first two would be two and four. Again, I'm just coming up with my own examples of those two consecutive even integers. You could have said 6, 8. You could have said 10, 12. But I like to choose smaller numbers. It's a lot easier. Okay. Step number two, then, okay, is to write first number as x. Okay. So it simply looks like this. This first number we're going to call x. Because remember, 2 and 4 are not the answers to this problem, right? They don't add up to be 78. We don't know what the numbers are. Whenever you don't know what a number is, we call it x. It's an unknown number, okay? Step 3 is to name next numbers in terms of x. Okay. So, on this one, we already have we already named the 2, okay? We got to name this 4. So, step 3 is we got to name this 4. Now, if x is 2, okay? Then x plus what number? Okay? x plus what number will equal 4? And remember, x is 2. So 2 plus what number will equal 4? And the answer to that is 2, right? So we can name 4 x plus 2. Think about that for a second, and then I'll recap how we got that. Okay. So again, we named the first number 2, our example number. We named it x. So right here, x is actually 2. We know what it is. We got to name this next number, which our example is 4. 
So how would we get to 4? Well, 2 plus what number? This 2 here. Plus what number equals 4? And the answer is 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. So we call it x plus 2. Okay? Step number 4. Okay? Step number 4 up here is we're going to write out. We're going to combine terms. I should say combine like terms. And then we're going to solve. Okay? So, again, this was sum. So I have my two numbers. My first number we called x. Okay, my second, well, and then it said sum, right? So we gotta add. My second number was x plus 2. So this represents the sum of two consecutive even integers. Again, don't know what they are, but that represents how to write this out. And it equaled 78. Okay? So now we wrote it out. Now we need to combine like terms. Well, put in your hidden ones here. Right, whenever we're combining terms, separate using bars. I have, well, this one's really easy. Oh, I should include that sign in case there's a negative. So I have two x's. Right? I have two x's. And then I have just plus 2. So 2x, two once I combine, plus 2 is equal to 78. Well, now you can solve it. Solve that two-step equation. So hit pause, solve it. All right, your work should have been exactly like mine. You should have had the do in the under box, divide by 2. I'm just going through this quickly because hopefully we all got there. Okay, for x, I got 36, I believe. Take that back, 38. Hopefully you corrected me on that one when I said that. Okay, is that the answer? Do you have the two consecutive even integers? The answer is no. We have x equals 38, but that's not the answer. Now remember, we called the first number x. So this, 38, represents the first number. Okay, well, what's the next consecutive even integer after that? And the answer is, well, the next consecutive even integer is 40. And again, we could have plugged, so over here, let me draw an arrow. So to get to this second number, we could have plugged in 38 plus 2, and that would give us the second number, which is 40. But we know the next consecutive even integer after 38 is simply 40. Okay, that's the answer, and you can check it. 38 plus 40, okay, are they consecutive even integers? Yes. Do they add up to be 78? Yes. That's your answer. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Find three consecutive odd integers whose sum is 267. So, find three consecutive odd integers whose sum is 267. Okay. All right, let's follow the steps. Step one was to write out example numbers. So we need three consecutive odd integers. Well, I think the easiest ones are just one, three, and five. Those are the easiest ones. Okay, step two is to write first number as x. So this first number, one, we're going to write as x. Okay. Step three, we got to write these next two numbers in terms of x. So how would we write 3 in terms of x? And remember, x is 1. We know that. Okay? Well, 1 plus what number equals 3? The answer is 1 plus 2 will get us to 3. And then 5, and this is where some students make mistakes. Okay? We're not talking about how do we go from 3 to 5, because x is what number? x is 1. So 1 plus what number equals 5? And the answer is 1 plus 4. So we would say that it's x plus 4 would equal 5. Again, we know x is 1. We called it 1 right here. Okay, So 1 plus 4 is equal to 5. So now we've basically named our three numbers. And now we can put them together. Kind of. So let's see, I'm going to change colors. Our three numbers using x would be x because that's his first one right here, okay? Plus, because it said sum, our second number was x plus 2, 
Okay, so we have x plus 2. That represents our second consecutive odd integer. And our third consecutive odd integer that we still need to add, we said was x plus 4. Okay, and we said that the sum of those all equals 267. Okay, now you need to combine like terms and simplify this equation to solve it. All right, so go ahead and do that. Hit pause, do that now. Alrighty, when you simplify that, let's see, these all have a hidden one, so there are 3x's, so 3x plus 2 and 4 plus 6, we'll give me 267, and when you solve that, I believe you get x equals 87, okay? Now, is that your answer? Did you find three consecutive odd integers? No, okay, that's just the first one. So what's the next consecutive odd integer after 87? Well, 88 is even, so that ain't it. 89 would be the next one. And then finally, 90 is not it. You have 91, okay? These are your three consecutive odd integers whose sum is 260, 267. Check them on your calculator to make sure that they add up to 267. Okay, before class, I want you to try number six on your own. So again, before class, you need to finish and show all of your work for this number six down below.